I currently work at a restaurant somewhere in the Midwest. And now obviously, I can't say what restaurant, but it's on a pretty busy road with lots of cars and lots of people walking on the road to get to the bus stop or whatever their destination may be. It's got its own parking lot where I usually will park closer to the doors. But the story I'm about to tell is the one time that I didn't. And that night, I sincerely regret my actions. To give some backstory, a couple of years ago, I just so happened to work at the sports bar and grill directly across the parking lot from my current job. I worked there for just four months, and I have plenty of interesting stories about that place, but that's for another post. Anyways, while I worked at my previous job, I didn't have a car, so I either walked to and from work, or I got a ride. Now mind you, I would walk home at around 10 some nights, on a barely lit road when cars weren't always around. This naturally made me weary, and this was on top of the fact that older men would constantly hit on me as a minor and make me feel watched. This backstory of my old job might not seem important at the moment, and I didn't think that it would ever become relevant again, but it matters in the end, I promise. While working at my old job, I was a minor, as previously stated, but that never stopped drunken men from approaching me and being inappropriate. There was one man in particular who I never forgot about and who came back to haunt me in the worst way. The man was taller, quite good looking, and always wore expensive looking clothing and accessories. He had a very elegant vibe to him, which is why I did not think much of him when he would talk to me while I was working. He started out very polite. He'd ask about how work was going, how my day was, or stuff like that. But as the weeks went on, he would ask more and more personal questions, which started making me suspicious of him. The event that occurred right before I quit was a night that I wish that I could forget when I'm thinking back on my days at the sports bar. I remember it being a long night, probably because it was a sports season and our restaurant would get very busy, and as a hostess, it was very stressful trying to take calls when there was shouting because the hockey team won a golden cup or whatnot. That night, after I had finished cleaning the bathrooms, I remember him being at the hostess stand waiting for me. I approached him and tried to make polite conversation, but I could tell immediately that he was acting strange. His gaze was shifty and he didn't look as put together as he normally did. The first thing he said to me was something along the lines of, You're 16, right? To which I confirmed, and he continued with something like, Well, when you're 18, I'll have something for you. It'll be a surprise. Just wait till you're 18. And he promptly left through the bar section of the grill. I stood shocked for a moment before composing myself and finishing my cleaning so I could get the hell out of there. After I finished counting my drawer down, I went out back and unlocked the bike that I had gotten a month or so after I started working there and began to ride home. Note that I was paranoid as hell as I was doing this because seriously, who the fuck says that to an underage girl? I watched my back all night as I rode home, and I felt watched the entire time. It was kind of my fault that he knew my age. I had told him a long time ago, as I mentioned something about birthday plans. But his comment on my age made me feel sick to my stomach regardless. Now... Let's jump to more recently, when I started my new job just across the parking lot. 
It's been years since I worked there, and I had just about to let go of the memories of working at the godforsaken sports bar. But something happened recently that made their memories feel like yesterday. The stimulus checks and nice weather have brought a surge of customers to my current restaurant. I've worked here for almost a year now, and we have been busier in the past month than we've been since I first started. This means that occasionally, I don't get to park right by the doors, and that I must park a bit further away. On this particular day, that still makes me feel nervous thinking about it, I had to park basically at the farthest corner of our lot due to a large amount of staff and customers taking the closer spots. That day, I thought nothing of it as I went in for my closing shift and worked a long and stressful shift until about 10 p.m. I worked at the front of the restaurant and our closing duties can be pretty grueling. That night was especially bad because I was the only one up front besides the manager who has to go back and forth between kitchen and front to help. I finished all my cleaning, albeit a bit later than usual, and I felt bad for taking so long, but they weren't too upset because a co-worker of mine was waiting on a ride, so they had to wait anyways. So with that, I say my goodbyes to the two of them and head out to the back doors to my car. I immediately was irritated that I had to walk so far to get to my car and I started digging for my keys. I didn't realize that there was a third car in our parking lot until it was almost too late. I finally grabbed my keys and after a moment of struggling to find them and realized that the car is in fact not my manager and it was parked right next to mine. Although it did look similar, which is why I didn't think much of it at first, being so exhausted from work. Upon getting closer, I realized that there's a person inside, so I remember thinking, is my co-worker's ride here? But no one came out to go home, so I assumed not. I looked back closer to the restaurant and realized that in front of the building, where I couldn't see before as I left out back, my manager's car was sitting empty right up front. All of these thoughts were piecing together as I slowly trailed to my car, and after connecting the dots, I tried to see who was in the car waiting for me. I remember squinting at them. I didn't have my glasses on, and that's probably what made them realize that I noticed them. And with that, they turned on their car. Immediately, I looked away because the car lights were too bright, and when I tried to look back again, the cabin light was turned on. I stopped dead in my tracks as if paralyzed, just writing this is starting to make my eyes tear up for some reason, but the expression that this man was wearing invoked so much fear that I think my heart quite literally skipped a beat. The man's features were a bit blurry with the distance and the darkness, but I could tell he knew me from somewhere with that little overhead light illuminating his face. The lack of facial expression is what really made me scared shitless because I figured he would smile, frown, wave, or anything. But instead, he sat there, arms at his sides, as he waited for me to come closer. Now, as a young woman, I should know better than to ignore my instincts telling me to get the hell out of the situation. But for a split second, I almost felt compelled to continue towards my car. I can't explain why, but I distinctly recall taking one step forwards before pausing and asking myself, What the fuck am I doing? And then, hightailing it back to the back door. I felt like I was prey about to be eaten, the way that I sensed his overwhelming presence behind me. 
The whole time, I debated going back and then running to safety, and he just sat right in his seat and didn't move an inch. Or so I assume, as I did not look back until I reached the door. I glanced back at his car for a split second before dashing inside, and all I remember seeing was his cabin light had turned off and that I could only see a dark figure, and the menacing light no longer illuminated his face. I didn't need to see his face to know that he was still staring. I could feel his beady eyes staring right at me. After scaring the hell out of my coworkers by yanking open the back door as I did, I explained what happened. They both immediately got serious and told me to wait with them while they waited for my other workers' ride. We sat for a few more minutes, and they talked about how freaky the situation was, and how they would call the cops if he was still there when we went outside together. And I just sat in silence. I was silent because in the few minutes after the encounter with a strange man, I knew I recognized him from somewhere. He was that same guy who had told me to wait for him when I turned 18. It took me a while because he didn't look like he used to. He looked much more bedraggled, a bit older, and much, much scarier. I don't know if he saw me that day as I brought out the trash, or maybe when I walked into work, but he knew that I was there somehow and that scared the shit out of me. When their ride finally arrived, we all walked out together, and my eyes instantly shot to the area where I knew his car was parked. It was just my car though, waiting for me to climb inside and get home ASAP. The manager saw my coworker off into their parents' car and then walked me to mine. She helped me check under my car and inside as apparently she had dealt with a stalker before and knew all the tricks to stay safe. I thanked her profusely and got in, locking my doors right away. And I watched her as she walked to her car and started to leave the lot. I looked frantically to see if, if I could spot his car anywhere in the shopping area that connected with our parking lots. But I found nothing. I live close by my work, so I took a long way home that night, fearing that he was waiting for me to go home to do something sinister. Needless to say, I didn't sleep well that night, as I kept thinking that he was in the darkest corner of my room with that hollow expression on his face. I considered making a police report but seeing as the police tend to be useless in scenarios like this, and I literally only had a first name, which could have also been fake, I decided against it. In the week since then, I haven't seen him or heard from him, and I still think about him every time that I leave the building, half expecting him to be either standing outside, ready to snatch me, or parked right next to my car. I always leave with my coworkers now, as my parents insisted that I begin doing after I told them what happened. And to this day, I still wonder why he remembered that I was 18. I'm almost 19 now, but he didn't know exactly when my birthday was, because I had almost completely forgotten him. And I hope that I never do find out what surprise he had waiting for me. All in all, I most definitely think that I've earned the right to say this much. Creepy man, whose name was apparently Michael. Let's not meet. So, it happened about two weeks ago, and I am still weirded out by it. Me and my fiancé have lived together for about a year. And since she gets home late from her job, and I am kind of lazy to cook lately, so we end up eating a lot of takeout. So this started with one of these lazy nights. We ordered a pizza from a new place that had a discount, and when the guy came to deliver it, he was super weird with me. 
I have tattoos on both my arms and my chest, and I answered the door shirtless since it was a hellish hot night. He kept looking at my tattoos while I paid for the pizza, but didn't say anything besides good night and left. I thought it was weird, but let it slide since sometimes people do look at my tattoos since they might seem strange. Told my fiance and she said as much. Then we forgot about it. But then, a week or so later, we ordered some barbecue from another place and he came to deliver again. We use an app here to order food that looks for the available deliverers. And he said he remembered my address right off the bat when he saw it on his app saying that my tattoos were so cool. He asked me to touch the one on my right arm because it looked like it had layers or some shit. Since this time I had paid online, I excused myself telling him off because of the pandemic and he appeared like he would still reach me anyway, but pulled out his hand and said, maybe next time, before giving a rather fake laugh and a getting ready to hop on his bike to leave. I went inside really freaked out and told my fiance, and she was pissed. She told me to complain about it on the app, but I'm afraid that he could return and do something since he knows where we live. We have been only ordering takeout now from places we know the delivery guys, and we took a break from that app. A weird delivery man came on to me in a creepy way. <laughs> This happened a few years ago, and sometimes I still have nightmares where I didn't manage to get away. Let me start off by saying that I live in a pretty big city, lots of bars and clubs, and that I have experience with partying and drugs. I have been in blackout drunk situations, and this was not that. I no longer go out on my own. That night, I had decided to go out with some friends, bar hopping. I mainly knew only one of the girls that I hung out with on a regular, and the other two were more acquaintances or strangers. I was very outgoing and loved meeting people, so that was nothing new for me. We had a few drinks at a bar, continued on to the next one, having fun, having great times. One of the girls that I didn't know well pulled out the party stuff sometime during our second bar visit. I decided to skip it because I wasn't looking to get effed up that night. My friend said yes and she and the third girl went to the bathroom. The second girl, let's call her Barb, kept saying that I should go with the two others. I declined and declined and she got a little aggressive and mean after the third time that I declined. My friend came back just then, and Barb acted like nothing had just happened. We had some new guys joined our group to flirt. I'm in a relationship, but my friend and Barb were not. By then, the second girl had left. Barb and my friend were starting to get pretty messed up. I went to use the bathroom and text my boyfriend that I was coming home soon and saw that my phone was dead. When I came back, the guys had gotten us shots. I was still pretty sober and declined the shot. Barb shoved the shot in my hand and to avoid a scene, I took it. I started to tell my friend that I was heading home, but one look at her face and Barb, and I saw that they were out of it. I was starting to feel pretty woozy myself, so I grabbed my things and their things and started shoving them to go. The guys that bought us the shots were protesting, but I wasn't getting resistance from the girls. I hailed a cab, and my phone was dead, so no Uber. And I remember putting the girls in the back and telling the driver that we were dropping off my friends at their house, then going to my address. Then, I blacked out. I remember dropping off my friend. Then a blackout. Then, I was alone with that driver. I was in the front seat and he was holding my hand. I looked around, disoriented, took in the sight of him holding my hand while driving, like my boyfriend would. And I saw my wallet in the center cup holder. The meter was off and he was telling me, 
that he was taking me to a romantic place. I told him no, to please take me home, and that my boyfriend was waiting at home. He said something along the lines of, Stop talking about him, I told you. Which, to me in hindsight, indicates that I had told him already many times. He said he just wanted to pretend for a little and held my hand tighter. I didn't want to trigger a violent reaction, so I left my hand there and started to reach for my wallet with my other hand. He saw, let go of my hand and took my wallet from the cup holder to his other side where I couldn't reach. I was still woozy and blacked out again. When I came to my senses, we were parked near a very known, romantic and touristy location in my city. Normally, this place was packed, but not that night. It's pretty far from anything else too and surrounded by woods. I started to cry and tell him to please take me home, that I want to see my boyfriend and that I won't tell anyone. Please. He looked at me and said, I will take you home if you pretend to be my girlfriend for a little while. I sat there in shock. I wished my brain was an adult. I wished I had never gone out, and I wished that I could see my boyfriend for the thousandth time that night. But I said okay, and he smiled, and he put my wallet back in a cup holder. I took it slowly and put it under my leg. He took my hand and looked out the front window, out into the little lake he had brought me to. He started talking, and I don't remember what he was saying, and I was trying not to black out again. I waited for him to look at me and ask again, to please take me home. He said if I let him give me a kiss. I said no. He looked mad for a fraction of a second and squeezed the hand he was still holding. He leaned in fast and kissed me anyways, and I kept my lips sealed tight against him, ready to fight, ready to bite and scratch and not go down easy. He let go of my hand and backed away. He started the car and started our way back to civilization. I was crying silently as possible, trying not to be hurt so he would forget that I was there and want to touch me or hold my hand. I waited till we were near enough people that I could bolt out of the car and find another way home. I think he saw me grabbing my wallet from under my leg and knew my intention to jump out at the next red light. He snatched it again and said he would drive me, and I just nodded, but by then, I didn't care about the wallet, my phone, or anything else. I was dead set at jumping out. Because no matter what, I was going to get home. I didn't know what time it was by then, but I do know there was almost no cars driving in my usually busy city. No buses, no people, but I didn't care anymore. He stopped at a red light and I unlocked the door and yanked it open and ran. I didn't look back, but I heard a car peel out of the intersection. He was running too. My phone was still dead, no wallet, so no money, really far from my house, and I was still drowsy and crying. I had no idea of the time, and I started walking home. I heard a car pull up near me and started running out of instinct. I heard a woman's voice yell out, Are you okay? I stopped and swirled around. And the most beautiful person that I have ever seen in the world was walking towards me slowly, hands out in front of her so as not to scare me. And I started crying even harder, even more incoherent than I had ever been in my life. She hugged me so hard and asked for my boyfriend's number. She called him and he answered straight away. She started telling him where I was and that I was okay and that she was taking me home. I cried the whole way back, trying to explain what happened, but still woozy, still freaking out. It was hard, so we drove in relative silence. 
When we got home, my boyfriend was waiting outside, losing his mind. My savior gave me a phone number to call her when I felt better, and then drove off. It was 5 a.m., and I left the bar at 10 p.m., and that's all I can remember. A week later, my wallet showed up in my mailbox. So yeah, taxi driver, I hope we never meet again. So he was a creep at definitely the wrong moment as well. Our family was grouped together back in 2019 over the remorse of losing my nan. He started talking to me about what I was wearing and that I lost weight. I was wearing a nice black dress with a white cardigan and black leggings. I'm sitting next to my dad, who is also visibly uncomfortable. My uncle has always been close to us, but he never really spoke spoke with me, you know? He starts talking about my hair and that it was a shame I cut it and blah blah blah. I was visibly confused. I was just here for a free meal and to feel sad about my nan's death with my mom mom who was going through a rough time. He starts talking more and more to me about fishing and how he was going to take me out fishing with him and his girlfriend. I was more set on how his girlfriend tried to murder him and now they are back together. I noticed a bit how he looked at me. I just kept getting more and more uncomfortable until he put his hand on my thigh. I moved seats as in I swapped with my dad and then on I just comforted my mom mom. My dad spoke to him and he said, and I kid you not, oh that, I was just fixing her dress, it was wrinkling. I was so confused when my dad said this, I mean it's meant to wrinkle, I'm sitting down after all. He reassured me he wasn't trying to make any advances, and that I was fine, I believed it for the most part. Like I have known this man my whole life, and he was a creep for some of it. Like he let me sit on his lap when we drove around the complex, he let me steer the car, I was 4 or 5 at the time. That was cool in retrospect for me being 5 and thinking he was so cool, but he didn't tell my parents we were going for a joyride in his new truck. So he was always a creep, and I was genuinely scared of him my whole life. He did it once more a few months ago after this coincidence, and me and my parents have stayed clear of him since. Or at least I was never alone with him. This happened about seven years ago, in the summer of 2014. I went to a local college for a few years, and my two friends were back in town for the summer. All of our parents were home that night, so the three of us decided to drive around looking for a place to chill and smoke a bowl. We stopped at a local park right off the main road, pulling up this windy gravel road into an empty parking lot. It was a soccer field, so it was pretty open, and the field was surrounded by a tree line. We got out and walked a little ways into the field, probably about 150 feet from the car, and started smoking and chatting. Now, this area is close to a pretty big airport, so there are always planes flying by, and this night was no different. At this point, it was around 9.30 to 10, so it was dark out, and after less than 10 minutes... We saw another car's headlights pull up the gravel road and into the parking lot. I noticed it was a pickup. It parked right next to my friend's car. And the three of us didn't really know what to do and just kind of looked at each other. We looked very conspicuous and were a bit worried that someone had come to kick us out. The park was closed at that time. The car turned off, and two people got out and started walking towards us. We decided to just play it cool. They walked right up to us, and there was a man and a woman who looked like they were in their late 50s or early 60s. The man wasn't wearing a shirt and had cargo shorts on and was wearing glasses. The woman was paler, 
She had blonde hair that was a little scraggly, and she also looked like she was wearing glasses. But it was hard to tell, and she probably didn't have as thick frames as the man. It was dark, so I didn't get a great look at them, even though that they were right next to us. The man said, What's up? Are you here to see the lights? No idea what that means. We mumbled, What do you mean lights? The lights, he said. They're all over, can't you see them? He pointed at the sky, and I realized he was talking about the stars. They're everywhere tonight. Look at the planes. They can't even get into the sky. As he was talking, he was looking at the sky, and he would just randomly get excited and shout, Look, there's one now. We looked up and just saw some planes taking off and landing. He was in utter amazement. He looked like he was breathless with wonder, and he started wandering off by himself with his hands on his head, looking at the sky and muttering. The woman stayed with us and started talking about how they've been tracking this movement for months. Those stars are angels, she said. They're getting stronger and stronger, which is why the planes are being forced to land. According to her, this night was the most active that they've ever been. After a couple minutes, which lined up pretty well with the woman's story, the man returned. He said, You know what this means, right? Jesus is coming back. His angels are getting ready. The planes are already going haywire and falling out of the sky. They were looking at the sky and kept pointing out planes that would fly by the stars. All of them because there were a lot of stars out. When a plane would pass by a bright star, they would get really excited and act like the pilot just escaped death. So, the three of us a bit freaked out. They seemed pretty invested in the sky, so after a pause, my friend piped up and said that we should get going because it's getting late. They exchanged friendly goodbyes with us. I shook the man's hand, and the lady leans in to hug me. And I'm just like, okay, sure. And then she kisses me on the cheek. I got a pretty good look at her then, and I realized that... She wasn't wearing glasses, and she had some of the most wild-looking eyes that I have ever seen, opened really wide with this piercing stare, and they were like a bright blue, almost silver. Just a very, very strange vibe. That little part stayed with me the most. But we left them in a field and walked back to the car, making sure that they were still in the field on the way. We were quiet until we got back onto the main road and then just said, What the hell was that? I had the feeling that they were some kind of doomsday preppers or part of some fundamentalist sect and that the man was probably on psychedelics. The woman was more lucid. I hope she was the one that drove. But... They didn't seem aggressive or like they wanted to harm us, but also a little unpredictable. So weird our Magadan couple that we met in a soccer field. If we meet again, our Magadan out of there. So let's not meet. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I would also like to thank my following patrons. Ralph, Tasha, Greasy Dave, Fire05, Gabriel, Eskimono, Silver Threads, Sevenfold, Moschino, and Matt's Chats. Thank you very, very much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel further, you can be a patron too. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. 
Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.